Hello everyone, this is Jaron from MarineAndReef.com. Today you're joining us for the 10 things you need to know about aquarium heaters. If that sounds like it's interesting, then stay tuned. Number one, heaters are a necessary evil, or are they? So what we're meaning when we tell you guys this is that yes, your tank needs to be at the proper temperature for the animals that you're keeping. This may need, mean that you need to have a heater. So we would generally recommend 78 degrees for marine tanks that are tropical and 80 degrees for tropical freshwater tanks. If you have cold water fish, you can keep it lower. If you have some um, specialty fish like discus, you can keep it a little warmer. For the most part, that's where we're going to recommend. However, most aquariums are going to naturally sit just a couple degrees above ambient temperature. This is because your lights and your filtration equipment are all going to produce a little bit of heat. So if you keep your tank at 77 or 70, um, your, keep your room rather at 76, 77 degrees, your tank may just sit at that 78 to 80 degrees on its own. So if you're somebody who keeps your house that temperature year round based on the climate in your area, you really don't need to have a heater. And this goes to part two of this, which is they're evil. And the reason aquarium heaters are evil is because they tend to fail. If the heater fails off, I mean the tank slowly gets cold and it may take a few days but eventually that can stress out the inhabitants you may start losing some fish if a heater fails on however it basically just cooks the whole tank and you can start losing fish within hours so we really don't want that heater to fail and the one way that is for sure to give you no heater failures is to not use a heater in the first place so if you're in a climate where you don't need to use a heater don't use one just let the tank sit where it is naturally and that should keep everything under control. Number two, two heaters are better than one heater. So what we mean by this is what we mentioned earlier. That is that aquarium heaters are prone to failure and if they fail, it can be really bad for your tank. Now, if you have one heater and it fails, it can be really bad. But if you, instead of choosing one large wattage heater that's very powerful, you go with two smaller heaters what you wind up doing is you can split the power difference and give yourself some redundancy. So in the case where a heater fails off, one of the heaters is not turning on. If you have two heaters, you still have half the power available, which is gonna mean the tank is not gonna get as cold and it's gonna take longer to cool down. This gives you more time to respond. Given that cold water usually takes days to really affect the fish, this gives you plenty of time to notice and get a replacement heater to swap out that bad one. In the other case, which is the worst scenario, where one of the heaters fails on, if you use two smaller heaters, only half the power is on, which means it's gonna take a lot longer for that water to heat up compared to if you had one large heater. This will give you more time to react, so maybe instead of a couple hours, you could have a day, maybe six to eight hours to respond, which is gonna make it much easier for you to identify what's going on and swap out that defective heater. Given how cheap aquarium heaters are, it could mean, you know, I'm spending 30 bucks on a big heater or 40 bucks on two small heaters. It's really best if you buy the two smaller heaters every single time. It's always going to be better. Number three, heater controllers are awesome. So you may be asking, what is a heater controller? Well, any heater you buy is going to have a controller built in. It's often going to be in the top. Sometimes there'll be an adjustment knob. This lifeguard is preset, but it still has a controller. What that controller does is it turns the heater on when the water gets too cold, and then it turns the heater off once it's reached the proper temperature. Well, as we've talked about, because heaters can fail, one very nice accessory is a separate heater controller. And what this device does is it has a temperature sensor that measures the water in the aquarium, and then it can turn the heater off when the water's above a certain temperature and turn it um, on when it's below the set temperature. And the nice thing about this is if your heater sticks on, that redundant controller will turn it off and prevent it from overheating. And if it turns off, a lot of these controllers are now Wi-Fi connected and they will notify you the tank is getting too cold. There used to be a lot more standalone only heater controllers, but really what's kind of put them out of business is that now there are full aquarium controllers that are pretty cheap and in addition to just being a heater controller, they have Wi-Fi connectivity, they have leak probes, they have all kinds of things. So right now, some of the base Hydros controllers will give you a heater controller function, and they're $200, but 
plus a whole bunch of other stuff. When the standalone controllers used to be over 100 bucks by themselves, they've now kind of gone away because you can get a lot more function out of something just a little bit more expensive. So definitely something to consider if you're really nervous about those heater failures. Just consider a controller. It gives you some redundancy. And most importantly, it's going to give you notifications if the heater fails on or off. So that way you can do something about it, not remain in the dark. Number four, an aquarium heater should never, ever, 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 ever run dry. So there's many mistakes you can make in this hobby. Some are embarrassing, some are annoying, but some are downright dangerous. And one that is dangerous is letting your aquarium heater run dry. If your aquarium heater runs dry, it'll overheat, can often melt things. If, say if it's in an acrylic sump, it can start melting the acrylic in the sump. It can actually cause the glass to shatter. It can cause the cap on your titanium heater to melt off. Then you have exposed wires and you have a recipe for a fire. So because of this, you absolutely do not want your aquarium heater to ever run dry. Now the main way to prevent this is to put your heater in a section of the aquarium that should never run dry. So for example, you could put the heater in the main display, which is probably the most traditional place and there should never be enough evaporation to expose that heater. If you're using the heater in, say, a filtration compartment in an all-in-one tank, like a BioCube, you wanna put it in a section that has a fixed baffle. So in a BioCube, that'd be the back right section. And if you have a sump, you wanna put it in another section that's baffled, usually the skimmer area, because as water evaporates, that section will not drop down. You really wanna avoid having the heater in, say, a return pump section as those can run dry if you're not topping off the tank and you have a lot of risks of not just poisoning your fish but also um, starting the fire. So just always make sure you put your heater in a location where it's going to stay wet all the time. Thing number five, heaters can burn fish. So what am I talking about heaters can burn fish? Well usually the way that this happens is the heater is sitting in the main display tank and the heater gets really hot and with certain fish that want to hide from other fish or fish are just very slow moving, they can bump up against the heater and you actually can see visible burn marks on the fish. It's quite bad when it happens. Now some fish are more prone to this than other fish and you also generally need a pretty big heater to get this effect. So with a small little heater in a 10 to 20 gallon tank, you're not going to burn fish. But some of the larger 1000 watt heaters, they do get very hot. And if you have some large fish, say like um, stingrays, that are in big tanks, the big heater, and they bump up against it, it's possible it could burn them. Now, what are you gonna to do to stop this? Well, the number one thing is to try to remove the heater from the display. So if you have a tank with an all-in-one chamber in the back with little compartments, you wanna put your heater in there, that way no fish can bump up against it. If you have a tank with a sump, you wanna put the heater in the sump so nothing can bump up against it. If you have a canister filter, you can use the heater in line um, Lifeguard makes an inline heater module that'll hold any glass heater. Uh, the double capacity heater module will hold any glass heater we have. That'll keep it out of the way where nothing can bump up against it. And um, just keep in mind that some fish are more prone to this than others. So for a lot of tanks, it's perfectly fine to have the heater in the aquarium. But if you have a fish that's slow moving, um, again, like some betas are known for this, some of the rays and also anemones, which aren't really a fish, they can move around, try to grab onto that heater, and then get burned when the heater turns on. If you have one of those animals, you may want to consider moving that heater to a separate location. Number six, heaters have temperature sensors. So why does this matter? Well, as we talked about earlier, your heater is going to turn on when the water's too cold and turn off when the water's too hot. So it needs some way of sensing that. So this is usually built into the heater. So on this glass heater, this lifeguard one, but most glass heaters, it's actually in the heater itself. So the heater knows the temperature where the heater is at. It doesn't know the temperature in the rest of the tank. So there's been times, especially on larger tanks, where I've had customers report, I, my heater is turning off, but I'm looking at the thermometer and it still says the water is cold. And often my first question is, where is the heater and where is the thermometer? So if you have a large tank, the heater could be turning off because it thinks the temperature of the water is correct, but on the far side of the aquarium, it's not. Um, in order to avoid this, what you wanna do is put the heater in a high flow area. That could be right by the output of your filter in the main display, or if it's in a sump, then water's constantly passing over it, 
it's in an all-in-one compartment, water's constantly over it, or again, in one of those lifeguard heater modules, you're pumping water over the heater continuously. This means that there's a much better distribution of the heat throughout the tank, and you don't get that problem where the heater thinks it's one temperature, but the other side of the tank is a different temperature. Another thing you can do with models like this H2 Pro heater, it has a separate temperature sensor on a little cord that comes off the heater. You can try to put that in a high flow area. That way it's reading a better average temperature. And then the nice thing is you don't have to have it right by the heater because when this 1000 watt heater turns on, it is going to be warm right by the heater, um, kind of no matter what. So by moving the sensor farther away from the large heater, it's gonna give you a better idea of the average temperature in the tank that can make your heater work a little bit better. Number seven, pick the proper sized heater. So heaters are not one of the situations where more power is more better. We all tend to think that, but that's not the case. One reason for this is heaters are prone to failure, as you've mentioned many times. And if you pick a really big heater and it gets stuck on, it'll kill your fish really fast instead of just very fast. So you generally don't want to oversize your heater. The other thing is a large heater will heat the water up much faster. And that's not necessarily a good thing because it tends to click on and off more often than one that slowly warms up the temperature and then slowly lets it fall. It's going to have less cycles, which means it'll actually last longer. So when it comes to picking the right size heater, manufacturers are going to give you different recommendations. And a lot of that is because they don't know if you want to warm your tank up 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. You're going to need a bigger heater if you need to cover a bigger temperature differential. So our recommendation is you want three watts of heater for approximately um, every five degrees of temperature increase per gallon. So for example, if you had a 50 gallon tank and you only needed to heat it five degrees, you could use a 150 watt heater, you'd be just fine. Now, if you're in a very cold climate and you needed double that, you needed a 10 degree, you would need a 300 watt heater. And because the manufacturers don't know how much of an increase you're gonna need, that's why the ratings aren't always consistent across brands. So if you don't need that much of an increase, don't buy that big of a heater. It can help prevent failures if that heater were to fail. And if you know you need a big increase, just keep that in mind when you're sizing that heater to make sure you get the right size. Number eight, heaters draw lots and lots of power. So I've been showing off this um, H2 Pro 1000 watt heater. It is the biggest heater that we have. But even if you're not using a really big heater, there's a strong chance that the heater could be the item that draws the most power in your aquarium. Particularly when you get to the very large heaters, um, this can be a problem because the standard household circuits in our homes are about 15 amp circuits and a large heater like this 1000 watt can pull just over eight amps on its own. So if that heater is plugged into the same circuit that all your other fish gear is or that your large entertainment center is or your blender is, there's a strong chance that when that heater clicks on, it could trip the breaker. Um, and that's not just, um, I don't want to trip the breaker. If it shuts off all your aquarium devices, your fish will suffocate and die. So you want to make sure that you're keeping in mind how much power that heater is drawing. In particular, I've had some people ask why we don't have 2,000 or 3,000 watt heaters. It's because you cannot use a heater that big on a normal household circuit. In fact, you cannot use two of these 1,000 watt heaters on a normal household circuit. So if you need that much heating capacity, you're probably going to have to go to an industrial inline titanium heater that's very expensive, and you're probably going to have to have an electrician wire it directly. And because that's a much more commercial option, that's why we don't have any heaters of that size. So just know how much heat your tank needs, know what circuit you're plugging it into, know what else is plugged into that, and keep that in mind as you're planning your tank. Number nine, do I want a glass heater or a titanium heater? So I've had people come to me and say, the glass heaters last way longer than the titanium heaters, and other people say the titanium heaters are way better than the glass heaters. Uh, what I can tell you is they're different and they're probably just as reliable each. <laughs> so they're, both can fail, as we mentioned earlier, failing on and off. I've seen glass heaters where the plastic has disconnected from the glass and then leached copper into a reef tank killing things. And I've seen the exact same thing happen with the plastic cap on the titanium heaters. 
I have seen problems with both of these heaters, so I don't know if one is better than the other. But what you will find is that you're only going to find glass heaters in um, smaller sizes, in sizes like this 1000 watt or even 500 watt plus. You're pretty much only going to find titanium. Um, the titanium heaters don't rust, they're very resistant to that, but they can fail just like the glass heaters can. Because I mentioned all these failures, the first thing I'll bring up is whether you have a glass or titanium, we'd recommend about every five years just throwing it away and getting a new one. You don't want it failing and hurting your live animals. The other thing to keep in mind with a glass heater versus a titanium heater is that glass transmits heat much more efficiently than titanium. And because of this, you're going to see some manufacturers who make both even, they'll say this glass heater that's 300 watts can say heat a 50 gallon tank, but this titanium heater um, that's 300 watts can only heat a 40 gallon tank. And the reason they say that is because the glass heater will heat the water faster than a titanium heater of the same wattage because the glass can transfer the heat to the water more efficiently than the titanium. Um, my personal recommendation is that that doesn't matter at all. And in fact, if it takes longer to heat up, that's good because it means less sudden changes in the tank. Well, that is one of the reasons why you'll see kind of those different recommendations from the manufacturer that the titanium heaters do heat the water more slowly than the glass heaters do. Number 10, suction cups don't suck, pun intended. So what we're talking about is that most heaters are going to include a suction cup to hold the heater in place, as well as the separate sensor in place if you have something like this H2 Pro. And those will work for approximately five seconds. All right, well, it may be five days or five weeks, but they're going to eventually stop working. And because they stop working, it's much better if you can mount your heater in a more secure way. So some things you can do, some aquarium sumps like those from Fiji Cube have brackets mounted to the sump that are going to let you strap the heater in. You can mount the heater in line with one of those lifeguard heater modules. Um, but you can also use these ice cap magnetic heater mounts. Um, the heaters slide in through these holes here. They sit in the tank and they'll be firm. Those magnets aren't going to stop sucking anytime. They're going to stand firm. Um, they even make these dual mounts, which are going to allow you to put two heaters side by side if you're using redundant heaters because you're a smart cookie. Um, and that's just much better. It's going to keep things neat. It's also going to stop the chance of things like that heater probe popping into the air because if that temperature sensor on your titanium heater pops into the air, the heater may think the tank is 75 degrees because that's what the air is. It'll stay on and really your tank is 90 degrees and it's cooking everything. So you really want to make sure both the heaters themselves and the temperature sensors, if you have a separate one, are mounted very securely. Magnets are great for that, or there's some other products that let you mount the heater. Um, another option is this Owasa filter. The Owasa internal filters, their hang-on filters, their canister filters, all have integrated heaters, and that's another way to keep the heater in a secure place, with high water flow where fish can't bump up against it. Um, it's going to give you fewer problems in the end and keep things a lot neater looking as well. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something new about aquarium heaters. If you like what you saw today, please like, subscribe, and most importantly, buy some stuff from marineandreef.com. That's what lets us continue to make these videos. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you guys soon.